I like to do research in zoos um, because there are a lot of different people who come there. So I think it's a really good place to look at the ways in which uh, people construct social experiences that involve nature and there are real opportunities for people to learn about the environment um, and to enjoy the environment even if they may be people who don't have access to places that we might consider more really natural or wild. I'm a social psychologist by training so I'm really interested in um, essentially the, the social meanings of nature and I think one mistake we often make um, as a society is to overemphasize the distinction between people and nature as if they're they're separable so for people to save nature requires them to save something else that's very foreign and separate and it's a long way away and really nature is just part of our lives so why do, what I'm really interested in is what's the significance of nature for people just as they live their everyday lives and that significance is partly created by what other people say to you mm. about nature and um, about its value and the ways people um, use nature as a place to have social experiences and you can certainly see this I think very much between parents and children because parents think about you know, what kind of experiences do I want my child to have and among those experiences, it's very parents put a lot of importance on exposing their child to nature and talking about nature. So zoos are one place they do that. I, I um, zoos are certainly there are lots of other places, but I can't go into people's backyards and, and study <laughs> them there. But I can go into that the zoo and see what's going on there. <laughs> I got interested in this topic because I was reading about um, people who were talking about how why they liked nature and why it was important to them and they would say things like being outside makes me think about myself differently I have a different sense of myself I feel connected to the world and I thought that's really interesting that that being outside is making you think about yourself differently yeah. um, so I really began to kind of pay attention to those comments and look for those comments and think about how that happened um, and what is that different sense of self? So I've defined an environmental identity very briefly as kind of a, a conception of yourself that is interconnected with the rest of nature um, rather than being separate. So it's partly that, um, that sort of cognitive concept. There's, of course, also when you feel connected to nature that has emotional implications as well. Um, and I think what really helps people to create an environmental identity, I think you can have very brief experiences that make you feel connected to nature. And as those experiences become connected to each other, as you have multiple experiences like that, you start to develop this, this more stable, long-lasting sense of yourself as, um, as having an environmental identity. And childhood experiences seem to be important for that in particular. I think people as children, you know, you can get a sense of yourself as a child that then becomes harder to change as you become an adult. So mm -hmm. that's why childhood experiences probably matter more, but that's not to say that that's the only thing that matters. It's just that children are kind of more susceptible to these impressions. One thing I would say is that it's very easy to think about education as, you know, transferring information from you, the expert, to right. them, the receptive yeah. audience. Right. And there's all kinds of reasons why that might not work very well. And so to include, including an environmental education, sort of kind of reconceptualize it as um, maybe awakening the potential that is already in that other person and working together to develop a shared appreciation and understanding for the environment so that um, education is really an interaction rather than you know a one-way stream of information